So, along with a lot of the press recently surrounding the release of the new Wallace and Gromit film, Ardman have released a short featurette that gives us an idea of the creative process behind this film. So, let's get ready to go behind the scenes of Wallace and Gromit, Vengeance Most Foul. So we first have these shots of Nick and Merlin walking down the corridors of Ardman towards the set, which is overlaid with some of the soundtrack from A Matter of Love and Death. And on the way there, you can see all these vast storage units and set pieces. So this first shot of the actual models behind the scenes appears to be kind of a photo shoot and the reason why became clear when we saw the trailer, you've got the newspaper clipping from the time of the wrong trousers when Wallace and Gromit captured Feathers McGraw. Feathers has it placed on his organ as he plays it. So the poses of the models in the background here look identical but to solidify that uh, there's actually a bit of concept art right next to the camera. Newspaper headlines are a staple of the Wallace and Gromit films, so that is another element that's great to see back. And similarly, we seem to have a photo shoot of Feathers McGraw. I'm leaning towards it just being publicity photos. Now this next bit is really quite exciting for fans of Wallace and Gromit, because you've got the zoo set from the wrong trousers. You can see from here there is the cargo cutout of the penguin saying welcome to the zoo. But what's really interesting about this is that the original set would have presumably been lost in the Ardman fire in 2005. So it's great to see such an iconic set not only rebuilt but expanded upon. And it's exactly what you'd imagine it to look like. You can see the animated kind of dive under the set which gives you a really good idea of the scale of these things. Actually I say animator but this very well could be a set designer. And you can see what an amazing job she's doing here by the like look at the weathering on this set that's what stands out to me straight away we're getting some detailing on what looks to be like a metal spike that maybe feathers has broken through or something but my favorite thing about it is the amount of dirt because it makes it this grungy horrible place uh, that you'd imagine would be torture for, for feathers to live in despite the colorful depictions to make the zoo look friendly and lifelike i love the contrast between that and then this scruffy awful <laughs> reality of it all. Here we've got a close-up of Gromit on a kind of armature thing. It appears to be the same kind of pose from before and you can see the clay fingers are being sculpted so that he can hold the plate. Then you've got Nick reacting to a shot. He seems pretty pleased with whatever he's seeing. Then we have this kind of wide shot in which you can see Merlin overlooking the set of presumably the police station. So these could either be two prison security guards or zookeepers. We know that Feathers is in a zoo, but then we also have actual policemen involved. So it'll be interesting to see the crossover there. I get the impression that this would be Feathers' escape. You've got the two, the two guards there, and I'm getting the vibes of they're kind of distracted and you see something moving on the TV or the TV gets cut off. But speaking of the TV, perhaps my favourite thing about this is that it's like an old CRT TV with a really fat back end as you can see there there's the one on the side and the one that Merlin's holding there but the reason that this is nice to see is that Wallace and Gromit is set in some unspecified kind of bygone era that's one of the charming things about them they're just set in the north of England somewhere in the past somewhere but you've got newer technology kind of seeping in through Wallace's inventions and stuff like that but yeah if they were to try and modernize it to appeal to a modern audience as many films do you would lose that, that kind of chunkiness and the, the nostalgic vibe of the whole thing. So yeah, we've got that with the TVs here. Now this is an interesting one because you've got this massive device and Wallace is being held in it. But you might have noticed that Wallace is in 2D. It looks like it could move like an armature but it's, it's just flat. And then you've got 2D versions of Wallace's jumpers hanging up on a washing line behind him. Now first of all, I thought could this be Feathers using this 2D Wallace as like target practice or something. But what I think it is, is a rough approximation of a scene that we'll see later on. And you can see Wallace's kind of motorbike helmet is being applied here, so make of that what you will. Here we've got the interchangeable mouths for Wallace specifically, and what's really interesting here is you've got each of them labelled with the sounds that the mouth is making. So because these films are traditionally stop motion animated, each syllable that you hear in the film has to be animated too, so that the mouth syncs with what the character is saying. And then you've got even more of them in these boxes to the side with a terrifying jawless Wallace head. There's some nice concept art of Gromit here. It looks to be drawn by Nick Park. 
and what it seems to be is kind of a guide for the character. Because this is a much bigger production, there will be many animators working on single characters like Wallace and Gromit. So obviously between all the footage, you want them to be consistent. So this appears to be like a, a rule book as to how Gromit should move. And he is only allowed to react and move in these specific ways that are detailed right here, which is ridiculous levels of detail. But no doubt if you didn't have this, the character could potentially fall apart and it wouldn't be the same Gromit. And speaking of, there's the lad himself, alongside his armature, despite looking like really simple blobs of clay, that's the effect that you want, they are surprisingly complex. And to the right, you can see this beautiful, finished plasticine grommet, which I think would be any fan's dream to see and, and hold. And then we've got a wide shot of what appears to be Wallace and Gromit's bathroom, which has only been seen before very briefly in this advert for N-Power, and what looks to be some kind of contraption being rigged up on the wall there. We can then see Ben Whitehead voicing Wallace in a recording booth with the script in front of him and he's kind of reading that out in sync with the footage that we've got on screen. Now come to think of it, this is actually quite unusual because with most kinds of animation, the voice is always recorded first and the animation is based around that voice. Maybe the delivery of some lines have been tweaked and improved somewhat and that's what we're seeing here. And we've then got the reactions of Nick and Merlin with their scripts as well. We then get to see what I was referring to earlier with what looks to be the launch sequence uh, that's at the start of every film. This is when Wallace is kind of catapulted out of bed and using some different technology every time is dressed and arrives in the living room. It's pretty identical to the shot we saw before of the 2D Wallace, but this time we've got the actual Wallace model along with actual modeled clothes on the washing line in the background. And the theme of this film is kind of gardening with the gnome improvements. So I think that's why we've got the kind of washing line set up here. We then have this shot which looks familiar from the, the kind of Netflix preview clip where you've got Grom in his dressing gown, kind of splattered with various sources from Wallace's invention. Now what stuck out to me here is that the Gromit mug, not that Gromit mug, the mug that belongs to Gromit with the J on it. In any promotion for the film, they've just been plain white mugs with the letters on them. But this specific design is actually from the Curse of the Were-Rabbit, from that iconic scene at the start. So once again, it's nice to see that continuity because I thought they'd change the design, but uh, they've kept it. And we can actually see here several versions of the mug, including a Wallace one, and how they've been intricately painted by all of these artists and in the background once again some kind of concept art for the mugs which like, isn't that crazy concept art for a mug now this clip may look uh, kind of strange for anyone unfamiliar with what mr park is doing here but this is nick park the creator of wallace and gromit and because he's the director of the film like a director's job is usually to direct the actors but in this case the actors are really the animators who manipulate the models so in order to inform Form that performance. The director will often act out how they want the character to kind of act in the scene. This is then used as reference material for the animators so that they can make the models move like they are told, basically. But this is particularly cool because Nick Park created Wallace and Gromit, so he's more familiar with how these characters should act than anyone. So it's great to see him so involved with the whole process. You can see the setup here from the Norbot introduction clip. So you've got this vast, luscious garden, which just looks like an amazing set. Like that looks really massive in scale. And you'll notice you've got the animator looking at two monitors. One of them has the footage and alongside it, the Nick Park reference material that we've just seen so that the movements of both of them can be compared alongside each other. We can then see that lovely bathroom set again from different angles. And then my God as Wallace put on some pounds because um, yeah, that's he's got a bit of a, is that some continuity from Where Rabbit there? Um, yeah, we have the delight of seeing a semi-nude Wallace, which is presumably for this bathroom sequence. You've got different versions of him there, but yeah, that's uh, undoubtedly disturbing imagery. And then we have a shot of the almost complete sequence. As Wallace is kind of clutching his shoulders as he's propelled along the floor in his bath for whatever reason. It probably links up with that previous teaser shot where he's flying across the floor in his uh, underwear. 
but when you pause the clip you realize that this kind of pink stuff in the background is the animator's hands flying along in every frame. Then we've got what seems to be a test screening of the film at Ardman or maybe just select clips which seems to be garnering a positive response. We've then got the aforementioned switching out of Wallace's different shaped mouths and in the background on some pages we seem to have some unseen shots of the characters and this could just be concept art but we've definitely got Wallace here in the middle. And lastly for this behind the scenes look we've got West Wallaby Street itself which is perhaps the only set that could be reused from the previous films but maybe they've expanded upon it there could be some more greenery going on there with the the garden theme and it finishes with Nick and Merlin kind of looking on as we fade into blackness and that is the behind the scenes look of Wallace and Gromit Vengeance Most Foul. I'm kind of split to be honest when it comes to uh, you know viewing behind the scenes footage before the film is released but in this instance I think the large majority has been seen in the trailer it's quite you know like a brief selection of clips that hopefully I've been able to shed some light on and you can see how Ardman's stop motion process works. So thanks for watching everyone and I'll see you next time.